let's discuss about the electric field due to an electric dipole at a point on the equilateral line considering an electric dipole ab so you can see here ab and 2d so d plus d is 2d so 2d be the dipole distance and the point p over here is the dipole moment P is a point on the equilateral line at a distance r from the midpoint O of the dipole which you can able to see here. The electric field at a point P due to the charge Q of the dipole is given by E1 equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught Q divided by BP square which is along BP. And you can see here this POB. So this is a triangle. So E1 equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught. Q divided by R square plus B square. R square plus D square has been substituted for BP square. The reason is that since this is a right angle triangle, we can apply the Pythagoras theorem and we can equate BP square equal to OP square plus OB square. So the value for OP is R square and the value for OB is D square. So instead of BP we can mention R square plus D square. So we got the E1 that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q divided by R square plus D square which is along BP. So considering the electric field E2 at a point P due to the charge minus Q of the dipole will form the equation that is E2 equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught Q divided by AP square because in this case we are considering E2 so this is indicating this triangle that is P so this is the triangle along AP by applying the same logic of right angle triangle by applying the Pythagoras theorem Instead of AP, we can apply R square plus D square. So E2 equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught Q divided by R square plus D square along PA. As of now, we knew E1 and E2 value. So the magnitudes of E1 and E2 are equal. To solving E1 and E2 into their horizontal and vertical components, the vertical components E1 sin theta and E2 sin theta or equal and its opposite. Therefore, we can just simply cancel it off. And if we consider about the horizontal components that is E1 cos theta and E2 cos theta will be getting to be added along PR. As of now, the resultant electric field at a point P due to the dipole is E equal to E1 cos theta plus E2 cos theta which is along PR. We knew that the magnitude of E1 and E2 is equal. So we can equate E1 is equal to E2. So we can mention E equal to 2 E1 cos theta since E1 and E2 is equal. So substituting the value for E that is substituting the value for E1 the resultant electric field E will be equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q divided by R square plus D square into this 2 cos theta which is over here. And we knew that cos theta is equal to D divided by root of R square plus D square. Substituting the value for cos theta. So it's 2 into D divided by R square plus D square. Instead of root we can mention 1 by 2. So we have indicated 1 by 2 over here. So on multiplying we will be getting 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplying both the cases we will be getting 2 into qd or else q into 2 into d which is mentioned equating the denominator r square plus d square will be having a power of 1 and r square plus d square will be having a power of 1 by 2 Adding up the powers, we will be getting R square plus D square, the whole power 3 by 2.
So now the resultant electric field of E equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q 2D divided by R square plus D square the whole power 3 by 2. Since we knew the value for P equal to Q 2D instead of Q 2D we can substitute and replace it as P. For a dipole D is considered to be very small when compared to R. So the value of D is equal to 1 since it is very small. By applying the value D equal to 1 so this term will be 1 to the power 1 instead of D it will be 1. So we will be getting by 4 pi epsilon naught P divided by R cube. So over here 2 and 2 will be getting cancelled and only r to the power of 3 will be there which has been defined over here. So now the direction of E is along PR parallel to the axis of the dipole and is directed opposite to the direction of the dipole moment.